Hi. Um, so I <laughs> wanted to say my birth story for my third child. Um, but he's almost two years old now. And yeah, so life is just busy and crazy. And I'm sure most of you can understand that like once you have kids, there's just not enough time in the day to do like anything. But um, so I'll just quickly go over my third child's birth story. Um, yeah, so it was uh, December 19th. 2020 now um so 2020 i posted a video of me thinking i maybe was in labor and um that was on at like i don't know three in the morning or something on december 19th i wasn't having contractions yet but i'm trying to remember i should have watched that video but i i'm trying to remember but i think i hadn't had contractions yet but i was bleeding and so I called in and they were like, well, don't come in until you have contractions. And I said, well, I really think I should come in because my prior, my second child was born under two hours um, from like start to finish. So we started to go, plan to go in to the hospital, um, even though I wasn't having contractions yet. My in-laws came over, they got there really fast, maybe like five minutes, and then uh, we were leaving at around 4.30 a.m. when I got my first contraction. It was like getting into the car and um, it was a pretty good one. It was pretty painful and it was my very first one. I had had some cramping before that, but like the contractions where it like has a rise and a fall and is very, it's like that's a contraction that I had at 4.30 in the morning getting into the car. Um... Yeah, so then we got we started driving to the hospital it was about 30 minutes. So along the way, I saw like the most beautiful things. It was so nice because it was Christmas time and I love Christmas and there were, you know, it was night nighttime it was dark, so there were um lights on everywhere and one person had this like huge sign that said Jesus in the front and I just thought that was really cool because it was helping me stay connected and focused and I was breathing through the contractions which were already coming pretty fast um and if I remember thinking my husband was driving so slow uh, I I don't know how fast he was actually driving but he kept looking at me because he was worried about me and I think he was probably worried that I would have the baby in the car um, because he had to deliver our second child because it came so fast so I think he was just like nervous like do I need to pull over and deliver the baby but in my head I was just trying to focus on breathing and relaxing um you know when there were breaks and having the contraction and uh yeah he I remember he kept like looking at me and I was just being like don't look at me just look at the road and drive faster but I didn't say that out loud I just said it out of my head but um yeah, so a 30 minute drive uh, in labor is pretty like crappy. It's not fun, but that's that was the closest, either way, the closest hospital is like a 30 minute drive for us. So <clears throat> it, it just is what it, what it is. But anyways, so I saw, oh, I saw like the time on the clock. I looked at the clock at one point, it said 444. And I saw, oh, there was like an address lit up for a business that said 444. I don't know. And I think there was one other thing. But anyways, I knew from past uh, readings, like 444 meant the angels are with you or something. Um, I knew it meant something angelic. And I felt like it was coming to me for, you know, a reason. Uh, oh, I think like someone's license plate had 444 on it or something. I, I remember I saw it, I think three times. Anyways, these little things were like just super magical to me. And um, I was just kind of in shock that it was, that it was actually going into labor at 38 weeks. Um, 
yeah, but it, it was exciting and yeah. So we got to the hospital and we went to check in and this is my first time going to a hospital and having a check-in experience where like I feel, I don't know, it was better this time. The first time I went, I was in excruciating pain with my first child and like I couldn't, I, I felt like I was swirling like in a wave constantly, like drowning. And I just was, I had no idea what was going on. I was just signing papers and I had no idea. But this time I was like, I had breaks and they could sign. And then I was like swaying and breathing when I had a contraction and then I could sign or read. It was just much better. So then I had to go to the bathroom really bad. I was like, I have to go pee really bad. I had already had, you know, diapers on because of the bleeding. So I, I went to the restroom and while I was in the rest, I, I went to the restroom when I stood up in the restroom and I had my diaper thing pulled up, um, I felt a gush and I thought that feels like my water breaking. So, um, I washed my hands and I went out and they took me to triage and I told the lady I felt a gush. And so she took off my pad and she checked to see if it was amniotic fluid, which they can tell, I think just by looking, I don't even know. But, um, she said, yes, it was. So I was in on the bed and she checked me and I was seven centimeters um, dilated. So that was really cool. And I should add that a week before this, I had had a 37 week checkup, which they were like, normally we don't do these. We would just wait till 38, but I had rescheduled for some reason. I forget, but I, I had just like put kind of pushed it. I was like, well, I really want this appointment. I think I missed my 36 week or something. Anyways, they were like, mm, okay, normally we would wait till 38 weeks but I got one at 37. So anyways, at that appointment, they checked me and I was not that, she didn't even tell me, but she, but she basically said like, nothing's happening. Like I wasn't dilated, um, which is funny because with my second pregnancy, I was three centimeters dilated at 38 weeks pregnant and then nothing happened until past 40 weeks. So it's just goes to show you that those things don't actually matter, but it's just interesting. So. Anyways, I was seven centimeters dilated in the um, triage and I told them I have really fast labors or at least my previous one was really, really fast. So they just wheeled me in from the bed to the um, delivery room like right away. And um, while I was going in, the midwife who I was gonna get was walking in the hallway and she was like, oh, I remember you, you're the one who didn't make it to the hospital last time. And I was shocked that she remembered us because she probably has a lot of people that she sees. But it was like, oh yeah. So she had been the one who, you know, after we had the baby at home, we went to the hospital and the midwife checked me and the baby and everything. So she didn't deliver the baby, but she stitched me because I, I had like two stitches the with my second delivery. So anyways, that was cool because we knew her kind of, you know, and then, so we went into the delivery room and I kept going, feeling like I had to go to the bathroom, like poop and pee. So I kept going to the toilet and just sitting there and just laboring on the toilet, which I really liked. And they kept asking me like, are you okay? Are you okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. Just like, give me some space. Um, and then I finally was like, oh, I should go out. They're going to be like really worried about me having the baby in the bathroom. So I went out and then they hooked me up to all their machines and they said they wanted to do an ultrasound to see if the baby was head down. And I freaked out because I was like, what the, like, I'm about to deliver this baby. Like, I don't care if he's head down. He could come out feet first for all I care, but I, I am not going to be wheeled into a c-section right now just because the baby's head down when he's almost out like that to me was crazy so i kind of panicked and i told them my concern and they were like well i mean he was head down last week like he should still be head down it shouldn't be like that 
problem, you know? And I was like, okay, whatever. And so they did it and they're like, yeah, he's head down. And um, that was kind of just annoying and weird and like, I, I don't understand that. But um, so we moved on from that. They attached me to all the, you know, belts and stuff that they put around you to check the baby's heart rate and your heart rate, I think. I don't know. They tried to put an IV in me like multiple times and it wasn't working and it was hurting me and it was just like, I'm going to have this baby like right now. So please stop poking me. Um, and so I ended up, they ended up raising, they asked me like how I wanted to be and I felt like I wanted to be on my knees, like, but their bed was tilted up this way. So I was kind of like leaning forward on the bed this way. And then they had the thing wrapped around my belly. So like my head was leaning on the bed up here and like my booty sticking out here. So they're all down here, like my husband. And so I just was um, like breathing into the bed cause I also had to have a mask on because of COVID and that was super annoying, but I kept pulling it down and just like tilting my head to the side that the nurses weren't on. And then if they came over, I would put it back up and they never said anything. Um, yeah, so I just, they, contractions were getting closer and more intense and I don't know at, at some point I was just like the baby's coming I I did that with my other son too and I just it was I can't even really explain it like I to myself even I I don't even really remember the feeling of like how I know but it's just like the baby's there like he's coming right now and um so Jeremy my, or my husband he kind of freaked out and was like that means the baby's coming to them because they didn't like come over right away um so then they did and then they looked and they're like yeah he's crowning and I pushed um three times and then I thought he was like out and they're like one more and I was kind of disappointed like what so I pushed one more time and he came out and it's that weird feeling of like blah, 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 blah. it's the strangest feeling it's like like if you like pushed spaghetti through something like not spaghetti with sauce just spaghetti like noodle cooked noodles and you like splooshed it through something but not squished it just like pull it it's weird and then um like right after I pushed him out I was just needed a second to like like gather myself you know um and I was turned away and it's very awkward and it's like I'm my big belly's hanging and it's just like uncomfortable and it's like to turn over is a chore and he's connected to me and like I have to move my legs a certain way and I was just tired for a second I just needed like a second so I was like I told them I felt sick and I didn't really feel sick in the sense that someone would think but I just felt like I needed a second so I leaned my head against the bed and I was just like okay I'm gonna have to like move my big old body around and like get the baby who's connected to me still somehow and they'll help me do it and it'll be okay and do that so just like getting myself together and then I, I was like okay I want to see him and this is all happening super fast but I was like I want to see him so I turn around and look at him and the poor baby is laying like just laying on the bed flat um like covered in like poop looking like liquid um and just all over like it was gross and he didn't look cute it wasn't pretty it was gross it looked like and I asked my husband later like what happened like did I poop diarrhea all over or what and he's like no I I think so he said what he saw and we discussed it and we think um, maybe there was, I did feel like a splash, like when he came out, like maybe he was blocking some of the amniotic fluid and when the rest of his body came out, more fluid came out with him and I think maybe he also pooped like at on the way out um, because originally my fluid looked clean but the stuff that was all over the bed and like all over him was like watery poop. 
Um, so I don't know. Whatever it was, it was gross. It it was like my saddest baby moment of like first seeing my baby. Like, um, it, I, yeah. And I was kind of like annoyed because he's just laying there all alone. Like nobody was touching him. And I don't know what I expected. I don't know what I expected, but he's just laying there like poopy alone on the bed. And I was just like, what the, <sighs> give me my baby. So I turned around and they helped get him and they cleaned him up a little bit from that whatever that was and um he was looking better and I was feeling better about it and I was cuddling him and he was very cute and sweet and he's relatively quiet like he did squawk a little bit but it wasn't like crazy crying or anything um and yeah and we he latched oh and he was born at 5 55 a.m so an hour and a half after I had my very first contraction, he was born. Um, so all of that happened really fast. Like we were only at the hospital for about 30 minutes before he was born. Um, but yeah, so it was more painful. I'll say for sure it was more painful than my second labor and delivery. Still wasn't more painful than my first, which I hadn't ended up getting an epidural with. And that one was still more painful. Um, I mean the upper before it was more painful up until the point when I got the epidural, but it was excruciating and I had constant pain and back labor with that one. And then the other two, the, the middle one was the easiest, least painful, but this last one, um, the water breaking more before the baby was born, I think had something to do with it being a little bit more painful because my other two, the water broke right before they were born. So I don't know, that's interesting, but everything went great. The baby was fine, um, I was fine, and he nursed fine and delivering the placenta. I don't even remember that happening, so that was fine. Um, I had like a teeny tiny tear that she said could heal naturally, so I opted for that over getting stitches because that hurts when you're not numb down there because they have to sh shoot lidocaine, they have to give you a shot of lidocaine and you're newly sore vagina um and then stitch it it I wish I hadn't done it the the last time um because I don't think I needed it technically so yeah that was that it was wonderful